Before I begin to relay the details of this ritual, I should probably explain that you need to be in a certain state of mind for it to work. I'm sure a lot of you out there know what I mean. Even though I'm not the best person to be explaining human emotions, it's kind of churning. Constant emptiness. A feeling that, although you have no desire to die, life simply takes too long, and you would rather have another option. It is very important that you feel this way when undertaking the ritual, because another option is exactly what we'll give you. The details are as follows. I've tried to make it as simple as possible and cut down to the cryptic rubbish that my contemporaries often include in these things. But you need to appreciate how hard that is. We don't live by any constants as you do. We live in symbolism and meaning. Bread does not sustain us, but the idea of bread makes a very good meal indeed. Still, enough talk. Even if you did want to hear about me, I wouldn't want to be able to explain it. Apologies for this also, but if you're not a resident of the United Kingdom, you have a little traveling to do. The new world doesn't interest as much as the old ones, and this isn't going to be as convenient as finding any old hospital or halfway house. You'll need to travel to Suffolk, England, where you find a public house called the Queen's Head. On the crossroad of four villages, Southworld, Aldebar, Dunwich, and Walberswick. They've all been well noted by history, though not necessarily in the history books. Anyhow, once there, visit the place during the hours of 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. and take a look around the pub yourself. The crossroads is a simple one. Four towns lie in different directions, though the new roads may not reflect accurately. Take a compass with you. Take ten steps toward each town, then ten steps back to your original location. Once you have done this for all four, proclaim, I have seen the crossroads too many times. Once said, step into the pub. Don't worry, you can turn around and leave. Go back to your quote-unquote life and read those stories from safety of a computer screen. If you do decide, however, to continue in this course of action, then go to the bar and ask for a glass of the house Malefic. The barman will give you a glass of red wine and accept no payment. Now, drink it. You are exactly halfway to where you want to be. Once it's gone, he will tell you that you've had enough and ask you to leave. Do as he says, for though he is a good friend of mine, he is a very spiteful man with an old crow for a wife, and he delights in an excuse for a fight. When you leave, you will find a large black horse outside. Mount it. It's yours. A little gift from me to you, in gratitude for the tasks you performed so far. The wine will have warmed you a little. I hope. It's going to be a long ride. It doesn't matter in which direction you travel. It never did. The roads will be old. Perhaps a dense fog will cover the tracks. Plow ahead. Do not deviate from the road. He may send a guard to veer from the mists and try to stop you. But keep moving. He may even send a loved one to plead that you slow down. This is a trick. It is me that he wants to stop. We have never seen eye to eye. The mist will pass, and you will see an end to the road ahead. A gorge of impossible death. Don't stare into it. Contrary to the popular belief, it doesn't gaze back. But it may hold you from your task. Neither of us want that, do we? To continue, you only need one thing. Ride the horse from the cliffside and plummet into the gorge. I never said this would be easy, did I? Don't worry, it's an exhilarating rush, for the most part. I shan't talk for the next few minutes of your trial. It would be improper, after all. Many don't make it this far. They suddenly decide they have too much to live for. <laughs> what a joke. As though cowardice and misery were badges of honor. However, those that do have the courage for this, and I commend you, I truly do, will have but one final task ahead of them, the hardest of all. He will appear to you, I've seen him before, more times than I would care to mention. 
and I know that this next part will be no easy task. You must deny him. He will show you your loved ones, those that have passed from life, and he will promise you a life with them. You must deny him. He will offer you bliss, a release from pain. You must deny him. Finally, he will offer his friendship and his regard. Deny him. His words are false, and you will find no sympathy with Finally, he will leave. Good. And now he will be alone. Now, for your gift, the reward for your efforts, no problem to a being like me. I will touch you upon the forehead once, and you will awaken your bed. You will find the most comfortable. From this point on, you will be possessed with irresistible charisma, and disease will never trouble you. No wound will harm you, and no argument will sway you. You'll be one of my children, and you will recognize others as I have dealt with by the black fingerprint on their forehead. The only catch? There isn't one. I'm not like him. I don't deal punishments. I reward my children.